When it comes to creating star schema models in Power BI, everybody preaches about that on the internet, and that's a good thing. But the reality is the examples shown on the internet are nowhere close to what happens in the real life. So you know that you have to create a star schema, but then when you turn on to your own data and take a look at it, you are zapped by the reality and you have no idea how do you create a star schema with your own data sets. In this video, I'm gonna talk about some very peculiar examples of data sets that we can have in real life and how do you build star schemas out of that. These examples are going to nudge you towards structured thinking patterns that you can follow in order to build more star schema-like models to make your DAX life a lot more simpler. Are you ready? Let's start. All right, fellas, let's just start in Excel with a vanilla star schema example. In case you don't know about star schemas, I will explain that to you real quick. All that we have in my Excel is a simple sales table, and the sales table has got one column called the product ID. If I wanna find any information about the product, I will have to look up this product ID in the second sheet, which is the products table, and then go search for that particular product ID right here in the product code column, and then I can fetch any column that I want, which is the product name column, the band column, or the price column. It could have many more columns as well, but that's how the VLOOKUP works in Excel, and that's how relationships works in Excel. So by definition, this is going to be your fact table. This is going to be the key column that you will actually link up with the products table, and you will link up with the product code column. That makes a simple one-to-many relationship. This is the vanilla definition of star schema, which is where you have the fact table and the dimension table. At the moment, we just have one dimension table. You could have many, many dimension tables. So for example, if we have the store code, you can have another dimension table from the store code linking up to the store code in the other table. We could have a calendar table linking up the date column right here to the calendar table. So that actually brings a neat and tidy star schema where all of your dimension tables are up on the top and the fact table is at the bottom. Now let's just take this case and make it slightly peculiar by adding the refunds table and take a look at how does our decision making when it comes to star schema changes. I've added another data set in Excel which is my refunds data and if you take a look at the data the refund data looks something like this. So we have the transaction ID, we have the refund Date, how many units were refunded and if refund status is pending or complete. Now think about it, how would you link this particular table to any of the tables present in the model? In the model at the moment, we have our sales table linked with the products table. Where are you going to build the relationship? Obviously, if you take a look at this particular column, it seems like the transaction ID is the right column to link with the uh, transaction ID in the sales table, which is right here. And that is absolutely correct. The only thing is that here, the transaction ID is unique. One row means one transaction ID, but here, here in the refunds table, the transaction ID is duplicated. For instance, there are two transaction IDs here. What explains that? This simply means that one transaction was refunded two times, maybe on one date, and then a few days later, the same transaction was refunded once again. Because you might have five units bought in total, but they, they were refunded in two instances, first two units, and then they were refunded by another three units after that. That explains the duplicacy of transaction ID in this particular table. Now, if you were to create a model, your model is going to look something like this. You would have your sales table right here and in the sales table you would have your transaction ID and that transaction ID is then going to be linked to your refunds table and the transaction ID right here where your sales table is going to have the one which is the dimension table and this is going to have the many which is your facts table and in this scenario what we have been able to do is that we have been able to make a snowflake like schema so if I want to take a look at which products were refunded I have the products table right here and the products table is linked to my sales table and the sales table is then linked to my refunds table so if I want to slice and dice the data, I can apply the slicer here. That is going to affect my sales table and that in turn is going to affect my refunds table. That is absolutely fine. Let's make this slightly tricky and take a look at how does the data modeling decisions change if we make this case slightly complicated. These are the exact techniques that I talk about in my DAX course. You'll not only learn how to obviously frame the solutions to the problems that I'm discussing in the course, but more importantly, I pay a lot of attention on explaining the logic as to why a thing is is working and why is it not working and how do you actually debug your own problems. This is going to boost your confidence tremendously while you're trying to build your own solutions and you'll be able to confidently build your solutions. In the last few weeks, I have completely revamped my DAX course and started from scratch teaching you the fundamentals, adding in a lot of content depth to the course. The new one is out now. I'll leave a link for you to join the course and you'll find it tremendously beneficial. Let's just go back to the video. Let's say as an added layer of complexity, what I want to analyze 
analyze is only the fully completed transactions that have been completed, marked completed. What do I mean? Please take a look. So I've got this refunds table, obviously, and you can see that we have a duplicate transaction right here and that transaction ID is duplicated. If both of these transaction IDs, which is this one and this one are marked complete, only then I want to consider that in my analysis. Otherwise, I do not really want to consider that in my analysis. Let's just say that I am trying to calculate a very simple calculation, which is units refunded. And I want to ensure that if both of the transaction IDs are complete or not, how would you then do this particular problem? Now, if you were to try to solve this using DAX, it becomes slightly tricky to be able to write a condition inside of DAX that allows you to check for both the transactions being completed or pending. I'm sure that is possible, but it becomes slightly trickier. Now, what you can do probably is that if you can move this particular process to the data cleaning stage and only invite the table where all the transactions have been complete and then build the model, it's going to be ridiculously easy. Now, there could be two ways of building the model and I'm going to explain to you both. The first method is that you have, let's say, reduced your refunds table to one unique row of all those transactions that have been fully completed. In that scenario, your relationship between the sales table and the refunds table is going to look something like this. So you would probably have your sales table right here and which is where you have the transaction ID. So this is your transaction ID. And then you have your refunds table right here. And again, in the refunds table, you again have your transaction ID. Now, because you have reduced this transaction ID column right here to only those rows or those transactions where it is fully completed, this obviously will have a unique row. So you'll have a one here and you would have a one here in terms of a one to one relationship. That's absolutely fine. There is no problem with that. But then you can take a step ahead. And what you can do is you can merge these two tables together and form like a simple column here, which is in your sales table, you can just create a column called refunds, or let's say units, and you can just mention the number of units which have been completed in terms of the transactions. Now, although you did start with a complex problem, but what you have done is you've again boiled it down to a very, very simple start schema. So your refunds table has now been merged to, to the sales table with just one column for all the transactions that have been refunded. That's nice. And that obviously is now linked to your products table, which is going to be up on the top. And then you can filter by any particular product. Now we started off with three or four tables. You have intelligently boiled it down to just two tables and brought all your analysis into a single table. Obviously, there are a lot of considerations into this, uh, depending upon the size of the data and the performance of the query. But I'm just giving you ideas in which you can make cleaner and slicker star schema models. All right, here is another very interesting case that looks very, very simple on the face of it, but it's quite tricky if you think about it. Let me know what do you think about this one. So again, I start with a vanilla star schema. So obviously we have the sales table and we have all the columns that you would expect out of the sales table. But then we also have the products table, which is going to be our dimension table. And we have the stores table, which is going to be our dimension table. The only trouble is that you get to know that the in the sales table, the price column right here is somehow incorrect and you want to revise the price and hike it up. The information about how much do you want to hike the price is mentioned in another price increase table, which is right here. Now, how do you read this particular table? So you say that in the month of May 2011, all the products that we have are going to be increased by 2%. And then later, maybe up until the month of November, the price hike is 2%. But November onwards, the price hike is 5%, not a flat out 5% increase, but a cumulative or a compounded 5% increase. That means you are increasing 5% on already increased 2% price. And then the price increases once again in the month of March, which is 2% and July 2012, again by 10%. How are you going to solve this problem? If you were to think about trying to build relationship of this particular table in any of the tables, it's going to be super hard to build the relationship and try to tackle that through DAX. However, if you start to force your mind to think about simple relationships, lookups, this is going to be a ridiculously easy problem to solve if you were to model the data in such a way and then bring this into a star schema format. Let me show it to you what I have done. Now, in terms of model, I have again built a simple and a clean star schema model. That means we have the products table as expected linked to the sales table as expected linked with my calendar table. Nothing that fancy going on. But there is a very interesting column if you notice that in the calendar table, I've built an accumulator column and that accumulator column tells me that when the price hike is coming up. If you actually go take a look at that accumulator column in the calendar table, it looks something like this. Let me actually sort the data in the ascending order and then you will see. The first price hike was in the month of May and up until the month of May, the accumulator actually shows the value of one. Now, as soon as I roll down to the month of May, you're going to see that the price is actually increased by 2%. If I scrolled all the way down to the month of November, you're going to see that the price again is hiked by 5% and not an absolute 5%, but a cumulative or a compounded 5% that actually becomes a little over 
over 7% right here. Now, how are we going to use this particular price? Now, what we can do is once you have built this particular column, it becomes ridiculously easy. All that I do is that I build the relationship between the calendar table and the sales table. And through this simple lookup through the date column, now actually the model becomes ridiculously easy to solve. All that I do is through the date, I just look up what date is it? Is it the date for the price increase or not? If the price is increasing, I can just fetch by how much the price is increasing, multiply that in my facts table in the price column and we are done. So, And now it becomes super, super simple because what we have done is we have been able to model the data in a very simple star schema like fashion so that we are able to find out that when the price is increasing. Let's make this case study slightly more tricky. After what you just saw, you're obviously going to ask me that nobody increases the price of all the products in one shot. People actually increase the price of the products at different intervals for different products. And what if we have that kind of scenario? How would you solve for that? Take a look. So I've got my sales table just as the way that you would expect it. Some standard columns. I have got my products table just as the way that you would expect it. But alongside, we have this very weird price increase table like it has been prepared in Excel. So here is the month when the prices are actually increases. Here is another column that shows by how much the prices are going to increase by. And then we have the name of the products right here. Now, if you see a Y, which is right here, Y means the price is increasing in the month of May by 2%. And if you actually go down in this particular table, the price of the same product is increasing once again in the month of November by 5%. It stays the same. And again, in the month of July, the price actually increases once again right here by 10%. And this is the kind of table that we have. Now, how are you going to model this and build again a star schema? Again, you should start to think like a star schema and how can I leverage relationships and pure structuring of the tables in such a way that it looks a very simple star schema. Let me help you understand the solution that I built. Now, it might seem like a simple unpivoting problem, but it's actually more than that. You'll have to take a look. So we obviously start with a simple calendar and the price products table being linked as a one to many relationship through the sales table. That's nice. But what I have also done is I've made an exclusive table through which I get to know for what particular product in what month the prices are increasing. So if you actually take a look at this price increase table that I have built, and I'm just going to drag that I have built a very, very simple relationship between the two columns, which is the price key column that I have created through the concatenation of the date and the concatenation of the name of the product or the code of the product. I get to know when the price is increasing and that key is right here. That key is right here, right here. And then what is the accumulated price increase? If you want to actually take a look at the table, I'm going to show that to you. That is simple, just two columns, which is right here. The key is nothing but the month and the year and the connected with that is the name of code of the product and how much the price is increasing all the way throughout the rest of the data. And that's pretty much it. Once you have created this particular table, your model becomes ridiculously simple and all that you would want to do in the model just look up for the accumulated price increase multiply that with the price that you have it right here and it's going to be a simple straightforward calculation which is where you multiply the accumulated increase by the price by the number of units and you have the new sales ready for you in case you struggle a lot with modeling and you would want to understand how modeling is done how DAX is written and how do you actually make your DAX simple I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my course point number two everybody talks about how do you build a star schema but you also have to learn to build the star schema when the data doesn't quite look like the star schema you have to force your brain to think about simple tables connections and relationships and start to come up with options and solutions that look very much like the star schema the other very very important thing only when you draw the model on a piece of paper you understand that how the star schema model is going to look like and how far away is that from your actual data the distance between the star schema and your actual actual data is actually the ETL or the data transformation process. And that tells you what is the work to be done in SQL, in Excel, in Power Query, whatever happens to be your ETL tool. That's how you deal with more realistic looking star schema based problems in life. If you would like to understand more about DAX functions and how do you learn them in a very structured way, I've got a very interesting video for you that you should watch the next. I'm going to see you inside the course. Cheers.